Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket, by the fans, for the fans. Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Caribbean Cricket Podcast Monday night call-in show. I was late to this one. Guess why? I've got an interview tomorrow. <laughs> How about that? So there's me prepping. There's me prepping hard, you know, hard for the interview. And then I looked at the time and I was like, wait a minute, am I supposed to be doing something? And I remembered, oh my God, I'm supposed to be doing this flipping live show. I'm sacrificing... I'm sacrificing job, I'm sacrificing promotion for the Caribbean Cricket Podcast Monday call-in show. Listen, the dedication is real, people. As soon as this is done, though, I'm giving you, like, one hour. I'm giving you, like, one hour, then I've got to go back. I've got to go back and prep. You've not got, you not got me trying to turn up to this interview without even knowing what I'm doing, what I'm talking about, so on and so forth. But anyways, people. We're back, we're live, you know, share the podcast, um, uh, like the podcast, subscribe, click that notification bell, all of that, all of that. Uh, who's in the live today? Rough Cut says, where's the co-host? Santoki doesn't do the, the late night lives, man. Santoki's probably enjoying. Um, he, he's going to be definitely awake, but Santoki don't want to do these live call-in shows, man. Um, but he'll be back, though. We've got something. I think we're recording something on... Thursday. So I can't remember what, what we're doing that on. Something about the England tour, but we're recording something on Thursday. So look out for that drop. Um, then uh, Sam Toki will be back then. So anyways, you lot already know how we do. Uh, call in show, you lot dictate what we're going to talk about. Technically, technically, I should be running through and I feel like at the start of this show, I should be running through the... Um, four-day championship. Obviously, the last round of four-day championship matches begin on Wednesday and uh, in about 48 hours' time. For those of you who haven't seen the table, I've been sent different tables, but effectively, the title is probably going to go to one of Windward Islands, Barbados Pride, or Guyana Harpy Eagles. It looks like it's Guyana's title to lose simply because they're playing the worst team in the tournament, which is the down bad CCC. Uh, where are they playing them? They're playing them at UE Spec. And you would assume that Guyana will just spin their way through uh, CCC, take as many maximum points as they can, and so on and so forth. So, I mean, just to let you know, so Wimmered Islands are top with 90 points if I round up. Barbados Pride are second with 88, and Guyana a third with 87. Leeward Islands lost to Barbados Pride pretty much puts them out of it. Even if they were to beat the Winwoods, there is no way that they will make up enough points over Guyana, who are certain to destroy CCC. So really what it boils down to, Barbados have a one-point advantage over Guyana. Barbados basically have to run through... When, uh, they have to run through West Indies Academy. So Barbados Pride are playing the academy at uh Coolidge and so I'm looking at the fixtures now and Guyana are playing CCC at UE Spec. I think the winner of the tournament is going to come between those two teams because it will effectively boil down to which one of Guyana and Barbados can beat the 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 Ute Man weak teams bad enough. If if you see where I'm coming from, which which of those two teams can take all of the bonus points and effectively destroy the the two Ute Man sides. Um, uh, enough to decide who 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 wins the title. But I think if you're going to base it on paper, just because the CCC are dreadful, you would have to assume that Guyana are the team uh, in pole position going into the final round. In terms of the sixth round and what happened, uh, Trinidad and Tobago smashed CCC. Do you not remember at the start of the tournament when I said CCC, before a ball had been bowled, I said CCC are dreadful, and I, I was writing on Twitter. I was saying in videos that I can't understand the purpose of 
putting CCC in if they're not going to bolster them with with significant um, if they're not going to bolster the team with with, with significant uh, senior talent. And it, it's played out like that. How many points has CCC got? So CCC after six games, obviously they've lost all six, have twenty seven points. Twenty seven, you know, like. Do you know what I mean? Uh, somebody says, can I see the table? Okay, one second. Let me share. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. One second, one second. Have I ever... Sh you lot, you lot got me out here just doing that dumbness. Right, can, I presume you lot can see that, right? So just for those of you who wanted to see the table. So there you go. Windward Islands, we tweeted this. When did we tweet this? Uh, yesterday, yesterday evening. Uh, UK time so you can see like I say that's the table look how down bad Jamaica are horrible technically Jamaica are the worst team in the tournament um when you really look at it down bad stink bad rotten 57 points um so there's a table for those who who can't see it wanted to see it so on and so forth you know um anyways let me stop sharing that and get back to the thing so so there you have it so uh sixth round let's just quickly go through it Trinidad and Tobago beat CCC by 123 runs. Uh, in terms of standout performers, CCC every round have given a player the greatest day of their lives, and then there was no difference in this round. Uh, Jason Mohammed got 157. Amir Jangu, I mentioned him in the previous um, C, uh, CCP video where I said, "How comes no one ever talks about Jangu?" Um, he got a double uh, a double century, 218. Just a silver got 79. And TNT declared 591 for seven. Uh, Amari Goodrich, the Bayesian um, bowler, took five for 92. Um, Yannick Otley got 56. I'm just talking about 50s and 100s here. Yannick Otley got 56 in um, CCC's reply of 238. Trinidad batted again uh, before they declared on 95 for two. Jason Mohammed, 41, not out. Amir Jangu, 34, not out. So those two had a fantastic day of, uh, match of it. And then in reply, TNT bowled out CCC for 3-2-5. Uh, Demel Evelyn got 73. Shamar Brooks, 62. Demario Richard, 66. Uh, Romario Graves got Romario Graves, sorry, got 47. Um, and then the wicket takers, Kari Pierre, 3 for 90. And Brian Charles, 4 for 46, were the pick of the bowlers. Did I talk about Anderson Phillip? Oh, sorry, in the first innings, Anderson Phillip took 5 for 71, which again... Uh, we spoke about it last time in terms of where is Anderson Phillip in the pecking order of fast bowlers. Jeremiah Louis didn't really show up in this round. Obviously, he's done well uh, across the tournament in general. But Anderson Phillip took another fifer. Um, took uh, again, which just begs the question: Is it him, Jeremiah Louis? If you're taking one of them to England, probably neither one will go. But if you're taking one, I just who are you taking out of those two? If you're taking someone. I don't think they will, but who would you take if they had to? Um, so that's a good, po a good uh, point from Rods. Take CCC out of the tournament. So if, if we remove everybody's averages or runs scored against CCC, what would their averages look like then? Obviously, you can only you can only beat. Pause. You can only score runs um, against whoever you're playing like everyone's had a chance to, to to beat down on ccc so um i don't know if that's i don't know if the i don't know if the validity of the argument but i get what you're saying like too many people have made too many runs against ccc and you almost have to put an asterisk by the runs because of it uh so the, anyways that was tnt uh they smashed ccc uh who else let's move to barbados versus leeward islands Leeward Islands went into round six, uh, leading the pack. They should have known that if they just beat Barbados, uh, because of the lead that they had over the others, if they beat Barbados, um, they effectively would have gone into the final round controlling their own destiny, but they fumbled the bag. And in, and in the process, put Barbados in pole position to potentially steal the title from Guyana. So what are the key talking points out of that? Barbados made 542 for nine, declared in their first innings. Craig Brathwaite, 189. Uh, Zachary McCaskey, 101. Let's pause on McCaskey there. Where are we, people, in the opener race to go to England? Where are we right now? McCaskey got a 50, I think, in the previous round in round five. He got 80-odd. He's followed that up with a 101. 
McCaskey was already the backup opener incumbent. So what are we saying now? There is, there's a there's a groundswell of opinion in the Caribbean that Mikhail Louis, because he's the leading run scorer in this year's championship, should get an opener spot. I don't agree with that, but I understand the argument. But because Zachary McCaskey was the incumbent backup opener, and I do need to just check. Let me just double check. Because he's, effect, he's essentially doing better than Tej, I says, let me just double check that because I could have that wrong. Let me just double check people. Let me just make sure. Just get my numbers up. Bear with me, people. So Mikhail Louis is probably going to end the tournament as a top run scorer. Uh, I'll come to you lot in the comments in the minute, in a minute to see what you lot are saying about that. Right, okay, here we go. So, yeah, so the top openers in the tournament are Mikhail Louis, 549 runs at 46, 200s, 450s. Craig Brathwaite, 473 runs at 48, 47, sorry, 200s. Uh, who else is an opener? Then it's Zachary McCaskey. McCaskey, 343 runs at 34, 100 and 150. And then the next opener after that is Solazano, 308 runs at 34, 250s. Boy, I don't even know where Tej is. Tej, I ain't even, can't even find Tej on this list. Tej is way down. 269 runs at 30, 100. So hear me out. Because you are obviously going to say Mikhail Louis is the top run scorer in the tournament. He should go. But he's a youth man. We already have, uh, in terms of the team that went to Australia, you already have 20-something-year-old, 23-year-old, whatever he is, Kurt McKenzie, 24, 25-year-old uh, Alec Athanase, Kabem Hodge, who's only just debuted, Justin Grays, who only just debuted. Are you not telling me that you want to add to those four inexperienced guys in our top six by taking another inexperienced guy to England. So that would mean, is if Justin Graves kept his spot, that would mean five of our top six would have about eight test matches between them. And then there's just Craig Brathwaite. So you want Craig Brathwaite, experienced guy, followed by five batters with about eight test matches between them if Mikhail Louis debuted in England. It don't make no sense. It really don't make no sense to me. Um, so if you are dropping Tej and if you are saying Tej is horrifically out of form and he hasn't done enough to justify keeping his spot, particularly because um, he did badly in his last set of, in his last few series, then you have to look at the incumbent backup. And the incumbent backup was McCaskey. McCaskey is averaging 35 in this year's competition, 100, 150. Does McCaskey go first? Does McCaskey replace Tej? Um, so let's see what you lot are saying on that. Sam says, if Tej isn't getting runs and experience is relevant, so you would just throw in a, just a Ute man, you just throw in any old Ute man and say, You made runs, you're in form, you go to England. We're talking about England, you know. We're not talking about you go to Zimbabwe, we're saying you go to England and face the moving ball in summertime. Come on, man, it's like you lot want to mash up, you, you lot want to mash up Ute man career quickly. Um, Haven Khan says Tej is dumb. Period. I don't necessarily disagree. What did um, Vanetta says? Um, Tej has his chance against CCC now, and that's the thing. If Tej bangs out a double century against CCC, like or at least gets a century, then maybe this conversation's redundant anyway. Okay. Um, so. Hmm. Uh, Osprey, big up Osprey. I hope it's after Will Osprey, but anyways, Osprey says, uh, Tej has batted two fewer innings than Louis McCaskey and Solazano, which counts in his favor, but he's not been a good championship for him. Yep, yeah, that's true because obviously that, that game between Guyana and Trinidad was washed out, I think, at the beginning, so that there, there is that, um, as well. Um, but there's, there's like I say, people, I think the the, it's kind of like wacky races between the openers. At one point, after Tasia's century a couple of rounds ago, or was it last round? I can't even remember. Um, it was like, oh, Tasia's got a century. Okay, back, okay, he's the incumbent. He keeps his spot. Then he's played against 
down bad Jamaica and couldn't convert. And all of a sudden now we see McCaskey score, score a century. We see Mikhail Louis get two more fifties. And, and all of a sudden now we're saying Tej is back, um, back in the pack again. Solazano hasn't cashed in. He's gone down in the pack as well. So let's not call it yet, people. Let's see how the final round goes. And then let's make decisions about who really should be going to England. There will be three openers, Craig Brathwaite and two others. I'm not saying we must decide who opens with Craig. We're not there yet. I'm just saying who are the two guys who should go to England to compete for that spot to uh, to open with Craig. You know? Um, uh, uh, good point. Who made this point? Mike S. Mike S says, please comment on the Guyana bowling lineup in which Louis got his two centuries. Yeah, do you know what? My guess, that's a valid point. Was that the lineup where they had they had um Ali Mohammed, um that next man who didn't play another game? What was his name? Because I had to, you know, who was that guy? My guess, if you're still in the in the live, who was that guy? It was a seamer. I'd never even heard of him before. And I had to go into my uncle's group chat, which has all the Guyanese uncles in it, and say, Who's this guy? What's he doing in the Guyan team? He's crap. What was his name, man? Um, I can't remember his name. So I get I get Mike S's point if he's making the point that I think he's trying to make that, that Louis made those back to back centuries against a down bad guy on a bowling lineup at that point in time. Um, I don't think multi played in that match either. Um, so I I, I kind of see where Mike S is coming with that point. Um, anyways, back to that uh, match. So, Brathwaite at 100, McCaskey 100. Ha <laughs> ha! Thanos, 127. Let's talk about Thanos. Thanos took uh, scored 127, and then he took... Um, Thanos took 10 wickets in the match. When uh, the Leewards replied to Barbados' 500 and odd, Leewards made 288. Louis, 52. Casey Carty, 127. Jewel Andrew, the young sensation, 53. Roston Chase, the pick of the bowlers, three for 47. So Chase backed up his 127 with three for 47. And then when the Leeward Islands followed on and made 3 1 1, Roston Chase took seven for 67. Thanos took 10 wickets in the match and scored a century. Thanos is inevitable. Roston Thanos is inevitable. People, <laughs> You can never rule out Thanos, you know. Just when you think you've ruled out Thanos, he does something to remind you why he's always selected in a West Indies team. You don't want to talk about, oh, but someone's in form. 127 with the bat and 10 wickets. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. And listen, I'm not saying nothing bad about Thanos because next thing I know, Thanos will click his fingers in Barbados and I will just disappear off this screen. So all I know is big up Thanos. He did his thing. If Desi is still picking the test squad to go England, you can bet your bottom dollar that Thanos will be in it. So big up Thanos, reminding everyone why he always manages to sneak into a West Indies team at any point in time. Um, so in the second, in the Leeward Island second innings, Louis 80, uh, Kieran, uh, Kieran Powell 52, Casey Carty backed up his 127 with 69. Uh, what well, so well done to him. Hayden Walsh batting at eight, scored a 60. And then Barbados chased down the 50 odd they needed uh, in 10 overs to win the match. So, like I say, that puts Barbados essentially, you would think, in a kind of uh, race with uh, Guyana to try and win the tournament uh, this week. Let's see what you guys are saying in the comments because I'm trying to look at two different screens at the same time. Um, oh, so let me drink some water. Ah, uh, caravan, a uh, caravan life back to earth has confirmed who the uh, Guyanese bowlers were Cadigan and Adams. Yeah, it was a down bad, it was a down bad guy on the lineup in that first match against um, second match against Lee with Irons. Um, ER007 says, Who do you want to see in the A squad for the Nepal series? I haven't really thought about that. To be fair, um, most of the players you see in that team will be players who will be going to the World Cup. Obviously, the IPL players notwithstanding. 
but you're going to see like your Brandon Kings and Alec Athanes will be in that. Obed McCoy, you assume, will be in that. Once you take away the kind of obvious players who, who are either already in the T20 side or literally part of a wider 15-man squad in the T, like Roston Chase, etc., you're not going to have many spots left to fill. So I don't think you lot should be seeing this um, this a a squad that's going to Nepal as an A squad. Most it's not going to be a youth man side. It's going to be majority players who are going to the World Cup with a few fringe guys. So it's not going to be like a let's pick the best under twenty five players in the West Indies. No, nothing like that. Uh, right. Anyway, so the, so the third match, Wimwood Islands beat um, West Indies Academy and beat them really well. To be fair. Uh, Wimbledon Islands made 1-6-2 in the first innings, which looked like it was going to put West Indies Academy on top. But um, they then bowled out West Indies Academy for 1-5-8. Uh, Joshua Bishop, again, pick of the bowlers, 4 for 24 in the first innings. Uh, and then when, when Wimbledon Islands made 2-7-5 in their second innings, Bishop took another 4 for 4 for 78, 8 wickets in the match. Wimbledon Islands um, had a four-run lead going into the second innings. And uh, put 275 on board. And from that point on, you knew they were going to win. Athenaeus led the way with 89. Um, Shamar Springer showing his all round credentials again. Uh, Springer got six wickets in the match, scored a 47. Got to keep some tabs and eyes on Springer. I want to see Shamar Springer get an 18 place when South Africa A come in the summer. Springer should definitely be in that squad. Um, Kevin Hodge, 41. Sino Ambris, 41. Um, and then West Indies Academy needed 280 to win, and they were they were bundled out uh, for one two one. Um, like say Shamar Spring and the pick of the bowlers for 30. So the Women's Islands won that one relatively comfortably. And then finally, Guyana smashed Jamaica. Uh, Guyana were at one point in the first innings they were 61 for six, one eight eight. Yeah, 61 for six. From 61 for six, they recovered to make 424. And from that moment on, you knew the game was done. There was no... Because Jamaica was so dreadful, you knew the game was done already from that point. Imlat made 101, not out. Kemal uh, Savary made one, uh, 155. Multi made 56. Um, and then Jamaica in response, 153. They're so shit. Jamaica are so shit. Um, they made 153. Nothing worth talking about in terms of anything with the bat. Per Mole took his usual Fifa. Um, yeah, he was the pick of the bowlers, obviously. Guyana then batted again. They probably didn't even need to. They made 147 for four, batting again, declared. Uh, Imlac 44, Kevin Sinclair 36, not out. And then Jamaica was set 419 to win, and they were bundled out for 206. Top scorer Kurt McKenzie with 40. Nothing else to really write about. Sinclair took three wickets. Could see him get a significant bowl. He actually bowled the most overs. So good to see Guyana actually give him some overs. Three for 32 and multi three for 32 as well. Before this round happens, that's kind of like a synopsis. Now I can put the link in the chat. Before this round happened, um, there was a, I, I did a video. You can go back and watch it on the archives. And I kind of said things I really want to see in this round. And one of the things I spoke about was I need to see Kurt McKenzie score some runs. Kurt scored 40. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Your West Indies, and it, it feels bad. I mean, he was a top scorer in Jamaica's second innings of 206, whatever it was they made. So some might say, oh, Mash, you're digging out Kurt, but Kurt got the most runs, but it's not good enough. What's Kurt done this season? Let me just look to see what McKenzie's done. He Remember, Kurt is West Indies' uh, test match number three, right? Kurt McKenzie has now batted 11 innings in this year's championship, 260 runs at 24 apiece. No hundreds, no fifties. How can your test match number three be one of the worst established batters in the tournament? It don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. And he's going England. He's going England. I asked Apanes to make some runs this round. He, he duly obliged with an 89. OK, so Athenaeus hasn't been at his fluent bit. And I think he got a teeth out, actually. Um, and actually, that's something I didn't even talk about. How many of you saw how dreadful some of the umpiring decisions were 
in this year, in this uh, in round six. Dreadful decisions. W- wickets, uh, balls going down leg side, clearly going down leg side, being given out plum LBW. It didn't make no sense. Umpiring was umpiring was down bad in in many of the matches. Um, Athenae's eight innings, two hundred and eighty-two runs at forty three fifties. Um, again, I'd like to see Alec hit some centuries, um, but I can't hate on him. Three fifties, averaging forty. We we work with it. We definitely can work with that. Um, so it's Mackenzie that's really my concern there. You lot are digging out Shandapur. And rightly so. But at least Tasia's got a century. Kurt's got nothing. No hundreds, no fifties. But how many people, uh, Eloise here is saying Kirk should not go to England. If we were be- if we were a proper team, if we were a proper team where players felt under genuine pressure for their spot, Kirk wouldn't go England. You'd almost say, okay, we saw you make... We saw you average, what, 33, 34 in Australia. You've come back to our down bad domestic championship and you can't score a 50, much less 100, right? You can't average over 30. I'm sorry, he's not even averaging over 25. What am I talking about? Like, he should be under some kind of pressure. But Kirk is going England. Kirk is going England. And then ain't, there ain't nothing any of you can do about it. You're going England, man. And it... it, it it's not good enough. It's not good enough. We can cuss Tej, but at least Tej has made one century. Bam. It's rubbish, cuz. Um, so there's issues around Kirk. Uh, who's this? 007 says, what about Casey Carty? Yeah, yeah, we can talk about Carty. Carty should be on the radar. Um, if Brandon King, if we're saying that Brandon King should be on the radar, then Carty should be on the radar, right? Remember, Carty's got a central contract. It's not Casey Carty doesn't have a white ball only contract. He's got a he's got an all formats or a central contract, right? So all things being right, they given how Carty bats in white ball cricket, all things being right, they should be using foresight here to say, hmm, maybe this guy would be good in Test cricket, right? Carty's batted ten innings so far in this year's tournament, four hundred and thirty-one runs in his ten innings. Obviously, he's averaging forty-three, one hundred and 450s the only player in the tournament that has four or more 50s in the tournament is Mikhail Louis so Carty's got the most 50s in the tournament and he's got a century he's kind of gone under the radar a bit there he has a central contract arguably arguably if we're talking about oh who gets a who gets a spot in the middle order if we needed someone arguably You'd be looking at Carty, wouldn't you? And you'd be saying, well, he's already in the West Indies setup. He already bats slow in, in, in 50 over cricket. Why, why don't we transition him across? Arguably. Who's better, Kurt McKenzie or Casey Carty? If you, if you can't tell that, then I can't help you. I can't help you. If you if you if you need me to to explain why Carty's better than McKenzie, then uh, anyways. I done talk. I done talk, man. There was a super chat earlier, and I didn't even press it. Mike S, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Mike S says, "I really look forward to this podcast every week." Thanks, Michelle. Yeah, uh, big up, big up yourself, Mike. I've got a job interview tomorrow. <laughs> job interview, and I'm doing this flipping live podcast. Uh, West Indies cricket for life, man. Um, so, uh, what's this question here? What's Imlax average? Um, Imlac. Uh, let me look at Imlac. Imlac's doing all right, to be fair. Uh, Imlac, eight innings, 380 runs at 54. 200s, 150. The question around Imlac is simple for me. I, I wonder and I don't know if... I don't know how big the touring squad to England is going to be. I think it's only going to be 15 players. Um, Imlac obviously went to Australia. So if we are of the... If we are of the belief that West Indies should be taking a backup wicketkeeper, then it's Imlac, isn't it? Um, Imlac gets the spot. He's doing well this season for Guyana, 200s in the tournament, 150. Then all, all that happens there is that Imlac keeps the spot as the incumbent backup wicketkeeper. He's not replacing Josh De Silva. Um, Josh hasn't done anything to justify being dropped. 
um, and just see what De Silva's done this year. Um, Josh, for those who want to know, seven innings uh, in this year's tournament, 216 runs at an average of 36, 250s. Um, Josh, ain't, Josh ain't getting dropped. So Im, Imlac's just done enough to just make sure he's the he's the backup incumbent um, if Josh would get in. It should, should Josh get ev uh, injured in any test match? Uh, Marlon Wilkins, let me come to this question simply because you posted it before and I didn't refer to it. Marlon says, Michelle, what are your thoughts on the two contrasting styles of test cricket going head to head soon? Basball versus grind ball. Um, there's an element of the West Indies fan base that wants, that hates the West Indies grind ball thing and says that we need to bat with more intent and that. It's not good cricket for Craig and Tej to to essentially try and face 400 balls and go at a strike rate of 22 and X, Y, Z. My belief is that you play to your strengths. And if West Indies strengths are grinding out runs, then you grind out runs. Um, look at our top six, right, that went to Australia. And I know Craig and Tage didn't make runs, but just look at the top six. Craig, Tage, McKenzie, Athanase, uh, Hodge, Graves. Let's just say there's no changes, and that's the top six that goes to England. That top six can't play basball. That top six can't play attacking cricket for the sake of attacking cricket. Oh, sorry, no, let me rephrase that. They could try and play attacking cricket, for the sake of attacking cricket, to save test match cricket, but they would be dunce and bolsy with it and get themselves out very quickly. You have to... There's a phrase that... Um, for those of you who are wrestling fans, there's a phrase that um, Paul Heyman used to use a lot when, um, when he was in charge of ECW in the early 2000s. And he would he said that his, his mission statement in ECW was he said, we have to accentuate our positives and hide our negatives, okay? He was well aware that ECW looked like this really kind of extreme bingo hall, rowdy wrestling company. But he focused on what are the things we can accentuate that make us stand out and what are the shitty things that we need to hide to make us not look so bush league. That's how I see the West Indies. That's how I see the West Indies. We're not uh, a top-tier side. So we have to look at our team and accentuate the positives and hide, as much as we can, the negatives. And whether West Indian fans want to accept it or not, grind ball is pretty much our, our positive. It's the one thing that feels natural. Um, Kurt McKenzie, that's not his. That's not his. So it's not everyone. Kurt McKenzie's positive is, I'm going to counter-attack. I'm going to take the attack to the bowls. And it worked in Australia. It may well work in England. Accentuate your positives. Try and hide your negatives. Does Kurt McKenzie have a good enough defence? I don't think he does. Hide your negatives. Accentuate your positives. So it doesn't have to be a collective team ethos. You can compartmentalise it and go player by player. Craig Brathwaite accentuate your positive it's going to take you 450 balls to score 150 runs you know what do that craig because if you do that we're still in the game accentuate your positives hide your negatives there's my lecture that's my sermon people and, and those of you um those of you who understood the wrestling re wrestling reference you would fully have understood where i was coming from with that um, so anyways, people, that's enough for me. I've kind of done the intro, um, <laughs> half an hour intro. Uh, please allow me today. This can't go two hours, people. Look at this. This is my notes for the interview. You can't even see it. Can you see it? This is my notes for the interview tomorrow. I haven't even finished my interview prep. Allow me. Allow me. You see when it gets to 11.40, at, if it gets to 11.40, we have to lock off this show. Because I need at least another 20 to 25 minutes to get ready for this interview. I can't even iron my shirt, cuz. I haven't even ironed my shirt for the interview. I don't even know what. I ain't even polished my shoes. I need to find my church shoes. I ain't even polished my shoes. It's looking long for me right now. 
out here talking cricket when I got a job to try and apply for. Right. So people, um, let me put the link in the chat. Anyone who wants to come on live, 11.40, we're locking this off. No way can it go past that. Right. Um, there we go. Link in the link in the link in the chat. Those who want to come on live, do your thing. Um, in terms of upcoming cricket, then so on Wednesday, Scorpions play Jamaica play Trinidad uh, at Sabina. Leewards play Winwards. I think that's at Queens Park Oval. Um, I thought it was going to be at Surfit, but I think it's at Queens Park Oval. If there's any Trinis in the chat, um, then uh. Then let me know. I think Leewards Winwards is at Queen's Park Oval. Uh, CCC and Guyana is at UE Spec. And the Academy versus Barbados is at CCG. Okay, so that's from Wednesday. And then just for those of you who actually follow our women's team, uh, it's, uh, in fact, we just had someone say it as well. Uh, the women's team, uh, Pakistan versus West Indies women, first ODI is on Thursday, the 18th. Second ODI is on Sunday, the 21st. So that's some of the upcoming cricket uh, for West Indies um, select sides. Did we? Did anyone ask about Shamar Joseph? I didn't, I didn't. I didn't even mention Shamar Joseph. You know, at no point did I mention Shamar. One of my key talking points. Did anyone put Shamar Joseph in the chat? Surprised no one's mentioned him. Did anyone mention him? I pro somebody probably mentioned him. I didn't even realize. Um, here we go. Here we go. T Brown. I knew somebody must have done. Uh, how was Shamar Joseph in his IPL debut? Um, so what did he go for again? Was it 47 runs? 47 runs in his four overs. Rod says Shamar was unlucky. Depends how you define unlucky. If I bowl a no ball and then bowl wides after the no ball, and then my no ball gets licked down for six. Am I unlucky or have I not executed the plan? Let's not let's not get this twisted, people, because I do think with Shamar, I think this is this is how you know West Indian fans are down bad. We're so desperate for something. We're so desperate to leave with something that we're gonna be like, oh no, Shamar was unlucky. <laughs> Man bold no balls, you know. <laughs> Man bowled no balls, then bowled about three wides, then bowled another no ball. They got licked out, and we, and our instinct to go is, yeah, that was unlucky. Still, <laughs> that's not unlucky, people. That's shit. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, but in fairness, he came back well after the first over. I think he got licked down for twenty two um, in the first over. Or was it twenty five? He came back well, and then I think in his last over, he got licked down for thirteen. I'm not ruling him out. Um, but I think we need to be careful to not see him as like the great savior, if you see what I mean. Um, it's only his what third T20 full stop or something like that. Like he would have been feeling that pressure to try and make an impact. Does that mean we don't take him to the World Cup? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. At the end of the day, he still has some kind of X factor in terms of his pace. Um, I just hope that what's his team he plays for again? Which is what's his team? Is it Delhi or is it Lucknow? I don't know, man. I think it's Lucknow. Um, I think he plays for Lucknow. Um, anyways, um, I just hope that Lucknow haven't looked at that and gone, oh, this guy's shit. Let's not play him again. Um, I hope he gets a few more games um, so we can make some kind of proper assessment. I don't like. I don't like these things where we try and, you see, modern day sports, modern day, this is my biggest bugbear about um, sports fandom in the 21st century. We try to extrapolate an entire season of meaning in one game. Rather than just see the one game for the one game, we try and make it like a big kind of analysis and go, well, he did this, so now it means this. Well, come on, we need a bigger sample size. We need a bigger sample size. So let's not rush to any kind of big pronouncements about whether he's good, whether he's shit, whether he was unlucky, whether it means this, whether it means that. Let's first and foremost hope that luck now give him some more games. And then when we've got a bit more of a sample size, let's try work out if it's worth taking him to the World Cup and if the risk is worth it. 
in an ideal world, he'd just go to Nepal. And we could actually just assess him that way because then we could actually play him in some games. We're at the we're at the behest and the mercy of an IPL side as to whether this guy is actually even going to play more than two games. So who knows? I don't even. Anyways, that's for another time. Anyways, T, uh, Mr. Brown is in the uh, in is in the is backstage in the green room. Let's bring him on. Let's see what he's got to say. Uh, anyone else who wants to come on, the link is in the chat somewhere. If you want to come on and you can't see the link, let me know. Uh, so let's do this. Yes, Mr. Brown, how you doing? Yeah, good, good. You know, big up, big up, you know, Tenos, Rustin, cheers still. On his, uh, <laughs> <big combo>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to run by you real quick was um, was Kevin Sinclair. Mm. And what you mentioned with Rustin just actually bring that to mind. Um, I'm calling from Botswana, actually. You know, I'm the guy in Botswana. Oh, snap, of course. Yeah. And you know what? When I saw your name, I was like, no, I know who this is, but I couldn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> of course, yeah, 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 yeah. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, good, 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 yeah. Yeah, so um, initially when um, I first started taking notice of Kevin Sinclair, he was a bowler off spinner, right? But mm. now in the last season, or in the last couple of first-class games, or the last few first-class games, he's, he's been putting up decent um, button scores. So I'm wondering, is there going to be a situation where um he becomes more of a batsman than a bowler and is, is it going to put um take away the place from a genuine spinner in the side so for example in the last test in in um in at the gaba mm. when it seemed like they played him instead of um of Multi. Multi because he had better skills with the bat mm. you know so so it, i first i wonder if there's going to be a situation in the future where you know, he will take the place of a genuine spinner because he has good skills with the bat. You know, and then now is it going to be another rust and chase all over again? A lot of this for me depends on you see, I your point is valid, first and foremost. But one of the the, the other things to throw into this mix is where and how Jason Holder also fits into this team. Mm. Because it's not so much for me whether Joseph, whether um, uh, Kevin Sinclair takes Moti's place. It's whether we're also trying to fit Jason Holder in. So if we're not trying to fit Jason Holder in, then yeah. I could see a situation where Sinclair and Moti both play. So, yeah. for example, Graves... Uh, Graves is number six. Um, mm. Josh is number seven. Sinclair is eight. eight. Um, in fact, that doesn't make sense. Do you know what? No, no, I'm taking this back. I don't yeah. see how that works. Sorry, you would only do that in like Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, etc., where you need two spinners. Sorry, I'm, so I'm taking that back yeah. because yeah. I can't see how you'd only play two paces and Justin Graves. But... Yeah. If Jason Holder comes back into the side as well, I foresee a situation where you have, so Holder is eight, three paces, mm -hmm. Shamar Joseph, Kimar Roach, Jaden Seals or Alzari Joseph. So that's four paces, then yeah. one spinner. Mm -hmm. Then you're looking at the question of who is your spinner? Do you go with Multi, who is better than Ke Kevin Sinclair, 100% better than Kevin Sinclair as an out-and-out -out spinner and a match-winning spinner? Or do you go with Kevin Sinclair, who you're effectively saying, you go and bat in the top six because you can actually bat? Yeah. And then and then you bowl the rust and chase overs. Do you get what I mean by that? You yeah, you, bowl yeah. the, you bowl the block and end over. And if you happen to take some wickets, it's a bonus, but you're effectively, you're effectively blocking an end. So I get yeah, yeah. I, I get where you're coming from. I, I do not foresee a situation where Sinclair gets in the side and we're thinking spin is the primary reason why you're in the side. I know I do I don't see that happening. I yeah. see him getting in the side because they're saying you can bolster our batting and you just so happen to bowl some off spin. So it's like now he's transitioning to a batting all rounder. It's a, in essence. Yeah. Like a number. Five or six, well, not five, but six, yeah, seven, maybe. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess fair enough, but I mean, especially when you consider the amount of seamers available now to go to England, mm. and then you know, Jane seems to be back now. Um, Shamar Joseph is all of a sudden now, and Roach is available, yeah. and you know, he's good in English condition, so I don't see how you not play at least three of those guys. Um, I mean, three of the, three of the seamers, so yeah, it, it's interesting. It's a funny, it's almost like the the back half of the team seems to be sorted more and more. Yes. The spinners and the, the batting all runners, but the it, it's a bottom heavy team, basically. It's, it's bottom heavy because now the, yes. the, 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 yeah, the spinners are dependent. Yeah, exactly. So, this part here. So, mm-hmm. Eloise says the spinner should depend on the pitch. And Eloise is right, but I just sense that the person that's going to lose out here is is multi which when we just strip everything away for a minute it is ridiculous yeah. it's ridiculous that we're saying no less than about a year since multi spinned us to victory in zimbabwe the and zimbabwe. spinning us spinning us and to we... victory in in uh in limited overs cricket as well that in less than a year we're saying oh multi might not play anymore you know because kevin sinclair come back that is, do, do, do you see what I mean? Well, why is it, yeah, yeah, and it's like, is the West Indies the only team or one of the few teams in international cricket where the main spinner doesn't play regardless of the conditions? So you look at a, a Nathan Lyon from Australia, for example, you know, regardless mm. of the conditions, you know, he's still playing. Yeah. Consistently. So it's like, for us, the spinner depends on the pitch. Yeah. Yeah, so... I, I actually, mean, it, yeah. It's, what, do you know what? Let me go further with that point you're making. So what people need to ask themselves is, is Gudakesh Multi a match winner? That's the first question I want everyone to ask themselves. And if the answer to that question is, yes, Gudakesh Multi is a match winner and he can bowl match winning spells, then the next question people have to ask themselves is, well, if that's the case, he should play regardless. Mm. Right? In the same way how, as let's use the Nathan Lyons, and everyone will say, oh, but Mash is different, Nathan Lyons a goal. I hear that, but England play Jack Leach if he's fit. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like exactly. Most teams who are good will play a spinner. Like if Maharaj is fit, South Africa are playing him. If if you if you see what I mean, right? We we so maybe the maybe the issue here is West Indies are forever hamstrung by the fact that we know that our batting is always brittle. So we're always looking at a side thinking, boy, how do we shore up the batting so that yeah, when the exactly. inevitable collapse comes, we have exactly. something yeah. at the bottom end to shore it up rather than thinking, who are our best bowlers? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. That's why we have uh, a Joshua De Silva towards the bottom end making 50s. Mm. Now Kevin clear towards the lower order making 50s again. Yeah. Yeah, so... Another quick one. Um, do you see any way how the West Indies can make a comeback in the next maybe five, ten years in the T20 scene? Um, I'd love to know what people in the comments are going to say to this. Um, there are... What the hell? Uh, I was seeing if I could do a poll for a second, but I don't think I can. There are people, um, I think, in this live chat right now who will tell you... Put in the comments, people, if you're one of them. Um, quickly put yes or no, people. Who thinks West Indies can win the World Cup? And let's just see. Just answer yes or no. Do you think West Indies can win the T20 World Cup? I want to see. I just want to see a quick straw poll of the first five to ten answers. Yes or no? In the comments, people. Do yes. And so one yes, two no's. Let me do a quick tally. Okay, see what I mean. So what we've got there. At one, two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One. Two, three, four, five. I'll stop there. So five, six, six people in the f- seven, seven people in the first 14 or 15 answers, 16 answers said, yeah, we can. And the reason why I asked that question um, is because I think there is a groundswell of opinion that you're saying, can we be good in the next five, 10 years? Some people think we're good now. <laughs> So, so that's why that's why I wanted to do that's why I wanted to do the poll. And that's why I didn't want to ask the question. Some people think 
we are the world <laughs> champions right now. So for West Indies to for West Indies to win this World Cup, we're gonna need some luck. I'm, I, that, that's how I see it. We're gonna need some luck. I am not saying that our team isn't strong. Sammy said in the press conference recently he already knows thirteen of his fifteen players. Um, and then he let he kind of let slip because I was I was trying to read into what's he not saying though, and he eventually kind of let slip that he thinks that we don't have a match winning spin. No, sorry, not a match winning spinner. We don't have a. He says we don't have a badgery. Some basically yeah. he feels that we don't have any bowlers that control the power play. And yeah. when he said that, when he said that, I thought, but if you think we don't have any bowlers that control the power play. That means that we could find ourselves in several matches where we're out of the match early. Yeah. Now, I, I think Sammy is banking on having an explosive enough batting lineup whereby anything is chaseable and yeah. anything, is, anything is settable. And when I look at our batting lineup, I get it. I get why he would think like that. When I look at our bowling attack, Apart from Moti and Hussain, I look at our bowling attack and I think anybody can score 200 plus against us just on a normal one because we don't know what kind of bowling lineup is going to turn up. On like, as I said in last week's show, Alzari Joseph is supposed to be our gunman bowler. <laughs> Alzari Joseph could go for 47 runs on just an average day. Do you, do you, do you, do you see where I'm coming yeah, from? Yeah. So I just feel that we do not have the bowling attack to yet to say that we are, yeah, to say that we are a, uh, we are a top four side who can 100% win. The, the World Cup. If we had a bowling attack that could complement Moti and Hussain, I'd be more confident. But I think I think we have a bowling attack that can. We saw it with England, right in the in the yeah. at Christmas in, where in December. yeah where yes we won the series, but there were two matches where England absolutely destroyed us. And people yeah. need to remember in a World Cup, a World Cup isn't a five match series. It's a yeah. do or die. Yeah. You've got to win. Yeah, you don't. You don't learn along the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, you ain't got time to lose one match and then, then go. Oh yeah, we'll get better in the next one. Like and then there was there was that English bowler who went for a crazy amount of runs. Or was that the one day? What's his name? Uh, was it Ford? No, no, bro. Is it Willie? No. Oh, English. Sorry, I forgot the English bowler. Yeah, the was English it? bowler who went. I can't even remember. Yeah, but there was that. Uh, maybe it was the one day. Uh, maybe I'm confused with the, with, the, with the ODIs. But yeah, there was that one match where the English bowler absolutely went for I think I think a hundred runs or something. Yeah, yeah Curran, that's, Sam Curran. Yeah, 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 the short guy. So yeah. yeah, you're right. You wouldn't have the chance to learn along the way. You know, it's on to the next one, on to the next one. You know, so I mean, I guess you just wait and see when we get to Afghanistan. You know, can we get by Afghanistan? Can we get by New Zealand when the time comes? We just have to wait and see. But anyways, let me not keep you too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, thank you for ringing in, you know, and uh, yeah. you know how it goes now, every Monday. Yeah, good luck with the interview in the morning still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know. I'll come in the Discord group and let people know. <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yeah, no worries. Take care. Yes, people. So um, I didn't even let me see what you lot were saying uh, in the comments because you, you lot are being bossy. You lot are being bossy about West Indies' chances in the World Cup. I'm going to have to do a World Cup episode as we get closer to it. Right. Ah, see, this is a point. Vanessa, I was just looking to see some of the comments. This is the point I think I'm trying to make. Can West Indies beat any big team in a single day? Yes, I agree. Will they do it consistently enough to win the World Cup? No, I'm with Vanessa. That's precisely my, my stance on it. I'm not saying that I don't think West Indies can't be injured on any given day or Australia or Pakistan or whoever. Yeah, of course we can. Our side's good enough to do that. But that's why I made that point to Mr. Brown about this. The World Cup isn't a bilateral five-match series where everyone can jump up and down and whine and drink juice and say, yeah, we won the series 3-2. That's not how the World Cup works. 
You see, when you lose that first match in the Super 6 stage or whatever that second stage is going to be called, say we get through the group. Let's say we beat Uganda, Papua New Guinea and uh, New Zealand and Afghanistan and we get through to whatever that next stage is called. You see, if you lose that first match in the next stage, you're already up against it now, you know. You can't say, oh, yeah, but we just have to win the next two. You, you are forgetting the pressure of do or die, must win cricket. And I think that's why I'm not going in with the level of confidence that some of you lot have, where I'm like, okay, yeah, on a given day we can, but a given day in the World Cup means you it's, it's win or go home when it gets to a certain stage. It's not win and learn. It's not lose and learn a lesson and let's come back next time. It's win or go home. You see, when we play New Zealand um, and Afghanistan in that first group stage, one of those games is likely to be, we best win this one. It's not, oh, but if we lose to New Zealand, we can beat Afghanistan and it should be okay. It's probably already going to be, boy, we best win this. Um, and we don't know what our players are like under pressure, under the pump in a World Cup setting. Every Look at India, right? Every tournament, India go into um, ODI World Cup. Um, look at look, Let's just actually, let's use the ODI World Cup. India went into the ODI World Cup as the favourites to win that World Cup. If I asked you lot the same question before the ODI World Cup, who do you think is going to win it? Probably all of you would have said, bar one or two people, India. India won every single match in that World Cup till the final. And when it got to do or die, they shrunk us. So I don't care if you think they were the best team in the World Cup or not. When it was do or die time, they didn't have the minerals for it. And this is why we have to be careful with being, with being dunce and bossy about our own side. We don't know if they've got the minerals. We know they can win a bilateral series. We don't know if they've got the minerals for do or die cricket. So I ain't coming in with the dunce and bolsey confidence. I'm just going to watch. Okay. Let's take it game by game. Let's start by beating up Papua New Guinea and Uganda. And let's just take it game by game and go from there. Um, anyways, what time is it? Half past. Anybody else want to come on the live before? Uh, we locked this one off. 202 of you in the live. Thank you for everyone who's come in the live um, call-in show. Uh, let me put the link because there might be one person who wants to do it. Um, thank you, everyone who's coming in the live call-in show. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all of that, all of that, all of that. Um, it's 11.32 p.m. UK time. So if you want to come on the show... And get your point across. We've got time for maybe one or two people if they jump on now. Beauty Connoisseur says, Mash, what do you think about the Bayesian wrist spinner Javed Leacott? He hasn't played that much in this year's tournament. Um, has he been injured? Let me just go. Let me go look at who's this coming in. Nathan's coming in. One sec, Nathan. Uh, let me just go look at Leacock's um, returns this year. I feel like he's not played that many matches. Uh, for Barbados, yeah. He's played one match. Was that the last match? Um, it's weird because uh, Javed was... Um, he played... Was it Super 50 or was it the Red Bull Championship before that where he played a lot more matches? Maybe it's because... Is, I don't know if there's any Bayesians in the chat. Has he been injured or is it just because Barbados have um, like so much strength in depth that he doesn't necessarily get to play per se um so i got i guess my answer to that question is i, I don't know like he, he needs some more he needs some more games before i can really i need more i need more of a sample size before i can really assess him um and work out if he's good enough okay we've got two people we've got two people for the live this might be how we end the show today um gonna bring ian on first if this is Ian, who I think it is, this must be Ian from Trinidad and Tobago, but we shall see very soon. Ian, how you doing? Bless, bless. Ian from Trinidad and Tobago, boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking to a celebrity, boy. Um, who, what, who? Who's the celebrity? You. <laughs> <laughs> 
My brother, how are you going? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. A pleasure to have you on the show. Same here, brother. Um, yeah, man, we could do it. I think an inform holder and arrested Joseph could back up the other two bowlers. So but Joseph. Mm -hmm. Jason gets in your T20 side. Of course. Hold on. I need, to get one, I need to get a pen and paper. One second. I just need to. So your bowlers in the T20 side, Multi, Akil. Yes. Alzari. Yes. Holder. We're missing someone. That's four. Well, the average the third would be uh rather third would, would be the all uh, all rounder all. So just two of them, those two all rounders. What about oh hold on, hold on, hold on. We have a problem here. We have a problem. If you have holder in your side, do you do you also have Shepherd and Andre Russell? Well, if I had a choice, I'd probably put Russell. But you see, at the end of the day, is it that these guys could you could pick your eleven as you go on, meaning you have a fourteen or a fifteen, and then you pick the eleven. Mm. Then you could shot you could rotate them. You don't really pick, you know, they're very similar players. Mm. So what you want to do is to rotate them, and as time go on, you, you fine tune and say, well, okay, Sheppy might be the man. But Holder is very stable, so I don't see why I, I don't see why he may not be that fast. Mm. But we saw an example recently um, with Shema, yeah, uh, and how fast he was and how fast Ron scored. Yes. Now, poor fella, he bowled five good balls and then he bowled a no ball and no ball a wide a wide and no ball, and I think there was really rough against him with the no baller. I mm. think it was because it was tight. But remember, if it's one thing, pace is not everything. Eh? In 2020, taking pace off the ball is more effective in most times than bowling fast. And you have to so have... You, you, you want someone with variations before yeah. someone... Okay. So, someone similar to Bravo, like how Bravo used to bowl, which is you can get it wide and flat on the off stump. Yeah. You have to but even though you have to stretch, it's still a legitimate ball. Because you have to work with a, you have to be scientific with what you do. Yeah, and, and then, according to the teams, Shepard might be the one to pick ahead of Rutherford. It's all a matter of how you assess the teams. I assure they're doing their homework and they're seeing what are the strengths and weaknesses of the other side, regardless of where they came from. So, whilst you were talking, I was just writing down because I think there's an issue. I think there's an issue with what you're saying here. Not in so much as the point about variations and, and so on and so forth, right? But if you have in your team Shepard, Dre, Jason, Moti, Akil, Alzari, and I'm not saying no, I'm just saying if you did, that means your bat in top five is probably King. Charles, for argument's sake, Shea Hope, Huran, Rovman. Now, if that is your team, Shafane Rutherford misses out. And I just want to know, are you fine with Shafane Rutherford missing out so that we play three all-rounders in Shepard, Dre, and Holder? In some matches. Okay. I think that, remember that you also have injury. You have different things, right? Mm-hmm. The thing so is that... This. Hold on, that's fine. And let me answer this. Does Hetty come back into your World Cup squad? Not team a hundred, squad. A hundred percent, yes. Okay. Okay. Next hope and show to come back. Say again? Hetty for hope. Oh, snap. Okay. Um. Next question. Does Obed McCoy come into your squad? No. He injury prone. He injury prone. Okay. And then last one. Do you take the gamble on Shamar Joseph? <laughs> now, yeah, this question never asked him for the day. Um, <laughs> I don't know. If I, 
to be honest, I don't think he, look, I really, the thing is, I think we could lose a match fast with him as, as great. Listen, I respect the man and I think he would be a great 2020 board, but I don't think in time for World Cup, honestly. Okay. I don't think in time for World Cup. Interesting. Well, because remember, what I'm saying is at the end of the day, pace is good, eh? but in that kind of cricket, pace off is the thing that work in. Watch, watch all the 2020 matches, who get any wickets? Those who pace off, very few men really out in because the ball real fast and catch them and thing, you know, very few. The majority out in because they went to play a shot and they play the shot and the ball now passing. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing, pace off. Look up who ran out the last match. Pace off, ball going wide, wide. He had to stretch for it, caught behind. It's, it's unattractive. It's unattractive cricket going to win it. Eh? Let me be honest. Eh? Bravo, mm -hmm. didn't you say too attractive? You know? I find you so bowl really unattractive, but you used to be effective. Mm -hmm. The kind of bowling you'd wonder, but you see Bravo running and this thing behind the arm and the ball bounce kind of funny and pull wide and people can't hit it or it rat. But in that kind of cricket, pace is good, but look at Afridi. Afridi get wood all over the place recently in Pakistan. Mm. And he real hot. So it's about wisdom. It's about using variation. And that's why I like Holder. Because Holder is a man could use a certain level of variation. And he have a lot of experience. All right? So I don't want to go to no such a drastic change. Um, I hope and convince me he's a good 2020 player yet. You say who's at hope? Yeah, I rather I rather help Maya come in and like help Maya Puran kind of thing. Mm. Or Puran help Maya either way. That is our two best as far as I concern attacking players. Okay, I'm gonna just say one last thing. I know, I know there's lots of people in the background, so I'm mindful that they're there yes. and. I'm trying to make sure I get to go to my bed. But um, um, you know that when you say Hetty, that starts World War Three in the Caribbean. But um, yeah, but he, he, they can say what they want. I, I, you know, I'm a man that's attack Hetty. You know that. <laughs> you know me as like, but the size of belly and thing. But let me tell you something. Yeah, Hetty, <laughs> Hetty, Hetty's one of the greatest. I have a lot of respect for him. I don't have a time for him. I always mama guy them a lot. And them guy, and he's just come on, man, thing. Yeah? I just like the mama guy with the little sign. He make the little devil sign and thing with the thing. But it's just kicks. You can't go to the World Cup without Hetty. Let me face it. And, and, and we, it's like we crippling ourselves. But okay, Hetty and Puran must, uh, must go. Last question on Hetty, just because I need to see where you stand on this, though. In, in IPL, Hetty is used as a finisher, slugger, whatever, right? Where more often than not, he doesn't have to face anything more than 20 balls and try to see his side over the line or uh, hit some late runs to to, to put up a, an imposing total. Hetty for the West Indies is expected to marshal the difficult overs between the middle overs between 7 to 15, build an innings, run some twos, um, and construct my only problem with Hetty is he has the skill set for it but we don't have the evidence as of late or recent of any real evidence at all that he is that he has the minerals for the role he's supposed to play for us so not his IPL role he I get why you want him over hope I don't actually I don't actually disagree necessarily with that but is hope better is hope better suited to accumulate between over seven to fifteen than Hetty is because Hetty seems to be just like a big belly slogger at the end of an innings these days. Oh no, no, no! Now you're 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 sound you're sounding like you're in the sea. No hope is technically hope is technically correct in the sense of straight bad ball and wicket and so on. But we want to see who hit him good ball for six and Hetty could do that. But he's a man of his here, of the middle, some for six, so I have a question about it. And I can't see us being in the World Cup without Hetty. I cannot see us in the World Cup without Hetty. I cannot see us in the World Cup without Puran, I can't see us without the World Cup. 
without um, Joseph and Zai. Um, uh, uh, but arrested as Zai, you have to start working on it. Right? I, I know for sure Somal, I will take him because he's still young. And in that kind of ticket, once, once you're dealing with accuracy and you have to, any error to go for four by any error to go for wide, any touch to go for six. So it's not actually not good, but you need a little time to learn the game, right? That's why I look at it. I started with Holder. I started with, I could start with Russell yet, but what I'm saying to you is this boy, um, Steppy, the Shepard, and, and this other guy, yeah, this boy, 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 Luckily, Ian, everything you just said there, I was I was up close to the screen like this, trying, yeah, to, <laughs> trying to hear everything you're saying. But I got it. Do you know what? I got it. I had to put your. <laughs> it looked like Gaia. Yeah, somebody came for your audio to shut you down. Whatever you were saying, but yes. um, I got I got the majority of it. Yeah. <laughs> listen, yeah. listen, Ian. There's, there's two more people that want to come on. So yeah, as much yeah. as you and I can continue to chop this up yeah. next week, come back on next week. Make sure the audio is fixed, but come back on next week and uh, we'll yeah. talk further on this. Okay, brother. Well, 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 All right, yeah. then. Take care, yeah? No problem. Yes, Osprey. Will Osprey um, is on next. So I've got Will, then Jacob, and then that is it, people. That is it. Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna flop this job interview. I can't believe it. I've I've I'm gonna fumble this interview tomorrow. All for the all for the West Indies, you know. I can't believe it. Should have just cancelled this live show. Now I'm gonna fumble the bag. Anyways, Will Ospreay. <laughs> Will Ospreay is up next. Let's bring him on. Will, how you doing? Hi Bash. How's everyone? Uh hope I, you're all having a good day wherever you are. I am good. Uh are you ringing from Scotland? I am. Excellent. Long time stuff. poster and commenter and discorder, but first time in the call. Fantastic. Um, I said, I've just seen, um, you know, we've just had uh, six, six rounds of the West Indies Championship, and we just had mm. the first round of the County Championship. I know you uh, seem to be uh, watching Emilio Gay smash 260. Yeah, yeah. Do, and do you know what? I, um, I had the discussions about whether he could be convinced uh, to play for West Indies, but... Um, I, th that that conversation is dead in the water. He genuinely has his heart set on playing for England, so I can't take that one any further. Uh, well, that was closer to what my question was going to be. The um, mm. question would be, it's like, if you could get a team from the diaspora and have them playing in the four-day championship, how well do you think they would do? So, interestingly enough, I don't think they'd do as well as we would expect them to do. And uh, my my reasoning for that is, I don't know how many people remember, but I don't know how, do you know, I'm not even sure how far back we're talking. I want to say at least 10, maybe 15, 12, whatever. Do you remember that um, we used to invite over some county sides to play in... Um, I'm thinking it might have been in List A cricket, maybe not county yeah, championship, but certainly List A. I think yeah, Kent, Kent came over, maybe Hampshire. Hampshire. Yeah, yeah, Kent Hampshire played Super 50. Yes, that's it, right? It was called. And, and um, I think Ireland A didn't as well. Did Ireland come over for one of them? Maybe. Yeah. Um, and I just, it, unless I'm mistaken, I might need to go pull my stats again to remind myself, but they weren't as good or as dominant. As like you on, on any given day, you'd say a county, um, a first class county in England has a far more professional setup than any West Indies domestic setup. But when Hampshire and Kent came over, and some people say, yeah, but Masha, they're out of season and players aren't at uh, prime perform uh, prime performance uh, at that stage of the season. It's like a warm up for them. I get all that, and it's. I just remember thinking, wow, you're not as dominant as I thought you were going to be. And I just wondered if adapting to West Indian conditions, slower, lower pitches is actually harder for English-based players to do 
than we think it is. I mean, England as a team rarely win in the Caribbean as it is, if, if, you, if you see where I'm coming from. So maybe, maybe it's not as easy to just translate it across and say, oh, yeah, they would do very well. Where I do think they'd do well is I think they'd tour better than West Indian players would tour uh, to, to other areas of the world. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I get what you're saying in there. I was just thinking, like says, if you're looking, because you want to says have more Red Bull games, more mm. players in there, and you want to do more connection with the diaspora. Mm. That's okay, because uh, I was like, I did my com my facts and my stats, and mm. if you're looking at the UK Caribbean diaspora in yeah. 2001, it was 217,000 people who came from the Caribbean diaspora in mm -hmm. 2011. Census there says that it's 421,000, and the most recent census 2021 it's 517,000 people with Caribbean heritage in the UK alone, you know, including mm -hmm. the US or Canada. So, in terms yeah. of that, it's growing far more rapidly as a player base than well, a potential player base than any of the individual islands are. So, mm -hmm. it's so something to tap into. I mean, the associates tap into diaspora players you know just to make good teams and england have been stealing players from west indies and south africa for decades and even australia are doing it now with getting tim david over from singapore mm. to being things so something like i said i i can expand your talent pool and expand your like competitive standards of cricket maybe having trying to cultivate a diaspora team that plays in the championships or plays games against west indies in the in Westing's domestic cell might be a way forward. So, I have nothing against that whatsoever, and I would wholeheartedly recommend it. The only critique I've got, and this is, and I'm not, and to be honest, I'm not all fay with the kind of rules and regulations myself. Every time I bring it up to people at Kent about Daniel Bell Drummond um, or any other player that may or may not be um, applicable within the English system, I'm always. The, the immediate response I always get is, but if they went and played for the West Indies, so we're talking, taking the argument a bit further now, if they went and played for the West Indies, they would have to count as an overseas player um, in England, irrespective of if they have a British passport or not. And I guess taking your point a bit further, I actually don't understand why that is no sorry not that i understand why it's the case i don't see why that has to be the case if you already have a british passport but you just happen to be playing for the west indies why are you an overseas player yeah yeah um the single thing with um paul sterling for exactly. ireland is i don't understand so why yeah what, why does that not exist hey i think it's one of those things that if actually someone went and tested it i think they'd find it quite difficult to say around because you know you just how can you have someone who's got a British passport not have to count as a foreign player in a UK team. But I don't think anyone's, you know, put that and tested that, you know, in front of you know, a court or, or a legal uh, a legal process. Mm. And but I think if you did that, you, you'd probably go out fairly because you're just excluding a player that's a British citizen from playing because he counts, because he plays internationally for somebody else. It, yeah, it's just... It's, it's... Uh, Does that make sense? Do you know right exactly? And it's it's one of those things that cricket specializes in 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 terms of cricket loves to score own goals. <laughs> if yeah. you may it makes sense. Unnecessary, unnecessary own goals, which uh hinder which just hinder natural development and say no, that's not on. Why? I, I don't know, but it's just not on. <laughs> so um, so yeah, it's the, the thing is like you've got to get a player who's committed enough to his international team to do that and go through the stress and costs of having to go through a legal, legal process to prove it. And, mm. you know, that's, if you're a player who just wants to concentrate on this cricket, you know, why would you put yourself through that extra stress on something that, you know, may turn out, may not be, may not get anywhere in the end. Um, everyone's talking about Beddenham. I, I can't remember the story of Beddenham. Oh, no, he was a county player, wasn't he? Um, and South Africa just picked him. So what, is he overseas now? I don't even know. Um, um, what's his first name? David Beddenham. There was a county he played for. Somebody will say it in the, in, 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 in the chat. 
But listen, um, do you know what is your first name? I said Will, but it's not. It's what is. What is your first? It's actually Osprey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Osprey is my middle name. My first right. name is Matt. But I use Osprey because, well, it's a cool middle name. Why not use it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> listen, Osprey. Um, uh, I wanted to keep uh, delving on this point, and it may be something that we have to pick up another uh, in another live one. But um, I'm going to end with uh, Jacob just because. I reckon if I am with Jacob, then I can shut this off at midnight. <laughs> yeah. No, that's <laughs> fair. That's fair. I, I don't want to keep you. I mean, best luck with the job interview. And yeah, yeah, if yeah. West Indies do come and play in Scotland, I mean, we, we can give you some competitive matches. <laughs> yeah, do you know <laughs> what? Scotland. Actually, do you know what? What's weird is every time we talk about West Indies and coming over here, everyone immediately pivots to, oh, yeah, West Indies should go to Ireland. No one ever really mentions Scotland as, a, as yeah, an like, option to go to. Well, I think you've got that warm-up gaming and beckoning them, and they're saying, well, you could have a warm game against whoever is an England picks and turn up, or you could have a game, a four-day game against Scotland, where you'll have the first team available, and a lot of, like, this, you know, Scotland players or associate players want to prove a point that they can compete with first full members. It would be much, like, what, something no. much more of a competitive side from the, the Scottish than you'll get from England players, just English players coming in for a knockabout. Exactly. And but the thing is, Scotland don't have anything to prove against us. We already know that Scotland are better than us. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I actually... always say that. I, know that. I don't think so. I think it's an even contest. But I think you get your event. Like, we'll see see how we do doing the Caribbean this uh, in June. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let, let, let's uh, let you know what actually. Let do you know what Os um, uh, Osprey? Remind me of this in in the Discord. When the World Cup does come come up, or as we get closer to the World Cup, um, come back on the show and let's do an uh, let's do a breakdown on the Scottish side. Let's um because why not? You know. Yeah. So um, so, so yeah. We said so as long as we beat England and you guys beat England and the uh, like Westies beat England somewhere. Oh, oh, that's good summer for me. I'm happy with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we. Oh, yeah. I think we could we can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'll take care. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hope everyone. I hope it goes well with the job interview. I hope everyone in the chat uh, has a good day. Yeah, no worries, I'll man. I'll get off. Catch you soon, yeah. Catch you soon. Yeah, no worries. Cool. Uh, big up the super chat from Jacob. Um, thank you. I did see it, but I was I was um, conversating at the time. Um, you lot, you lot are not even trying to. Osprey's the first person to say good luck. Jacob's like, consider it consolation. Jacob's already telling me I'm going to flop the interview. He's like, hold this. Hold this for when you flop. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Um, last person, Jacob. Oh, no, it's Jacob. What am I talking about? Jacob is Jacob. I didn't even realise. There's me talking about... There's me thinking, oh, yeah, thanks, Jacob. It's actually Jacob who's coming on next. Um, so, uh, <laughs> last person. The last person on the show is Jacob, people. Uh, and then I will lock it off. If you haven't as yet... Uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, uh, what else? Notifications. Um, we're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, um, Discord. If you want to get in on the Discord group, oh, someone's just said it. Panda Steph says it's a Discord open. Yeah, Panda, uh, the Discord is actually available to anybody. You got to respect the rules in there, though. Um, every now and again, I boot people out if they disrespect the rules and and, and talk crud. Um, and you have to go in Discord jail for whether an hour, two hours, seven days, whatever it might be. So if you want to be in a Discord group, Tabo is in the live at the moment. Tabo, send the link. Tabo is Tabo is one of our regular Discord habitual line steppers. I had to I had to put him in Discord jail. <laughs> um, but, but, um, Tabo or anybody who's in the Discord, get the link from the group. Uh, put it in the live, and if anybody wants to join the Caribbean Cricket Podcast Discord group, that's where we talk a lot, to be fair, when matches are going on, IPL, county cricket, wrestling. There's so many channels on there. There's a wrestling channel. There's a Down Bad Man United channel. There's a, a politics channel. Um, uh, what else do we have in there? There's Caribbean Cricket Podcast episodes channel. So we talk about everything in there. Um, um only moderators can send the link. Well, only I can do it. Listen, anyways, let me bring... Then I would have to go in the live. Oh, this is long. I'll try and put the link in the live. Uh, bear with me, Jacob. I'm going to bring you on. 
I'm going to try put the Discord link just in this live right now. Bear with me, people, just because somebody asked it. I hope now, nah, because now there's going to be like a hundred people who try come in the Discord group. There's a family in there, you know. Um, okay, one second. One second. Jacob, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Let's we'll try and sort this out now. Um, okay, share link. Okay, uh, let me go into the live. People just watching me just on my phone trying to sort out this Discord thing. One second. Um, okay. Yeah, do you know, good point, Panda. I could have put it as a community post. But the problem is, Panda, um, if I put it as a community post, all that would happen. And you, have you not seen what happens on Twitter? You post something on Twitter nowadays, and as soon as you post something, you get about 100 bots saying pussy in bio after you've posted something. It's long. I'm tired of getting pussy in bio and nude ass in bio under everything that I post. Allow me. Elon Musk, allow me. <laughs> it's not every day pussy in bio. Let me just post something. <laughs> but um, anyways, let me, let me put this up. Um, right. Um, one second. All right. Yeah, you can hear me. Um, yeah, one sec. Um, um, right. Um, what's that? Um, all right. Yeah, you can hear me. Um, yeah, one second. Um, right. Right. Has that just gone? That, that should have just gone in. I think. Has that just gone in the chat? Can anyone see? Can anyone see a link, a Discord link that's gone in? Just let me know if you can see it. It says on my phone that it's gone in there. Uh, let me know. I just posted it from my from Bromley Live with Love one, which is my football thing. But let me go and know if it goes in there. Nope. What the hell? Oh, I'll come back to it. Anyways, Jacob, come on. Uh, too much of that. Jacob, how you doing? Good, Mash. Good, Mash. Good to be here. And excellent. Where are you ringing from? I'm from America. Oh, is oh. it? Oh, yes. do you know what? I thought I thought you were from the UK or something, you know? No, but you the same. I'm American. I'm American. I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. Boston in the house. Yeah. So what's up, uh, bro? Not uh I can speak. I'm gonna really be such a disappointment compared to Osprey. But I was just going to give a very mild defense of can West Indies win the World Cup? I okay. don't think it's likely. If you asked will West Indies win the World Cup, my answer would definitely be no. Yeah. Um, but can the West Indies win the World Cup? There's not a there's not actually a clear front runner for this World Cup. Um, and, and like, I think it, it, it is possible that, um, you know, um, that they, that they, um, build something. <laughs> I'm, again, I'm being a disappointment. I think it's possible that I think there's enough batting and, and, um, maybe enough bowling that they can, uh, pull a miracle. I don't think it's likely. I think it's possible though. I'm being such what a disappointment. Do you let me let me ask you something. What do you see as um what would you accept as the minimum 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 level expectation as 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 in at the end of the tournament you'd be like, you know what, they did all right. Is it getting to the final? Is it getting to the, the next stage? Is it getting to the semis? What do you consider a good World Cup? I think um a good World Cup would be doing well in the super eights like getting very close to a semi-final spot and you know maybe missing out on net run rate or something like that okay uh, that would be i think that'd be a, a, like a maybe slightly above par result but i do think it's certainly possible that they make it to um the semi-finals because i keep looking at the teams and like there's no none of them are pretty, all of them have pretty major flaws England kind of, I know it's a different format, but England kind of just bombed out of um, the ODI World Cup. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still, uh, India has ha, have a lot of slow batters. Their bowling is very good, but they have a lot of slow, slower batters. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa, they're South Africa. They always choke. <laughs> um, yeah. They have a very strong team, but you know, South Africa and knockout match. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to go for that. Um, Australia have again, have some of the same problems as India, but they do have a lot of strengths, too. And so, there's a, there's enough flaws in all of the front runners that I think it's possible that they pull something, like, uh, that, they, that they make it to the semifinals, certainly. And if they're in the semifinals, you know, anything can happen. 
I've that no, that part is true. If we do somehow find ourselves in the semis, much less the final, then we've got a puncher's chance. Yeah, I we think it's maybe like chance. a fifteen percent chance for the semis, or maybe twenty percent mm. chance for the semis. And you know, once you're in the semis, things happen. It's not. But okay, I guess I guess fundamentally though, what I like to say, I don't ultimately disagree with what you're saying. But I guess the final thing I'd put to you then is. Okay, let's just say arguments say we get out of the group, which I think I still think a lot of people are taking that for granted. But let's just oh, say we I, get out. I, of yeah, I, I don't think you should take it for granted. It's a it's a pretty strong group, New Zealand yeah. and Afghanistan. You know, just put it this way, right? And the and the associates are not that weak. Papua New Guinea is a decent team. Uganda is kind of you know been doing things recently. It's 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 probably the strongest group, or at least close to it. Well, this is the thing. So this is the thing that I think West Indian fans are forgetting. After, forget pack. I'm going to forget. I'm going to look over Papua New Guinea and Uganda for now. I'm going to look specifically at Afghanistan. Afghanistan are not looking at us and thinking, "Oh shit, we've got to play the West Indies." If you see what I mean, they yeah, will be looking yeah. at us <laughs> thinking, "Yeah, we can beat them." If 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 you see what I'm talking about, yeah, I don't disagree at all. I don't disagree at all. So I mean, I'll, I'll leave, I'll leave New nice. Zealand out because New Zealand are New Zealand, right? So I think. What if we get through our group? The next question I then ask myself after that is to get to the final, we would have to put together, I think, five games in a row of you basic once you're in the super six, whatever that next stage is called, you you basically can't afford to lose. To guarantee your passage through, you can't afford to lose. Maybe you can afford to lose one, but in that one that you lose, you can't afford to lose it badly. So essentially what we're saying once they're in the next stage, if they get to the next stage, is they have to put together five perfect games of cricket to win a World Cup. And that's the only discrepancy I have with West Indian fans who think we've got a very good chance of winning it. I'm yet to see from this side that they can put together five good games in a row. I think they can put together two good games in a row. I think but three. I don't even. possibly three, but I'm I think it's a stretch to think they can put five in a row. I, I definitely mean, do think it's a stretch look, too. <laughs> okay? I definitely do think it's a stretch too. I think we're violently right. agreeing. And, and very reason, politely, violently agreeing. <laughs> the other reason why I say that as well, and this is where I'll draw, I don't know if you're a football soccer fan. This is where I draw the parallel with, for those in the chat who are football fans, I don't, I don't know what the American equivalent would be in terms of um, whichever American sport you follow, whether it be basketball, uh, American football, etc. cetera. Um, in, in the Premier League in this country, Jacob, we have a team called Manchester City who have won five of the last six leagues, uh, six titles in this country. And when Man City get to the end point of a season with about seven, six, five games to go, eight games to go, everybody in this country knows that they're not losing again. If you see what I mean, because they just have winner's mentality that, you know what, we're winning all these games because that's what we do. And that's where... I don't feel West Indies are there yet. Australia have that, where they're like, you know what? By hook or crook, we are winning games no matter what. South Africa, the exact yeah, South Africa don't have By that. By hook or crook, we will <laughs> lose in that. We will lose. So, so that's the only reason why I can't have the level of confidence that some others have, because I'm yet to see what I call the, the winners, the winners mentality from them. They've got a fighting mentality but that's different from a winner's mentality uh and that's what that's what tends to uh be the be the kind of you know the the kind what am i trying to say here that's what that's what tends to be like the small percentages um that differentiate between those who go on to win tournaments versus those who have a good tournament yeah. if, if that makes sense so so yeah like yeah like I'm not. I would not put any. I wouldn't even put money on them getting into the semis. I'm not even sure I'd put money on them getting into the super eights. But it's more that n none of the other opposition are that intimidating. There's a yes, lot of I hate that. and all of them. And the West Indies are at home. 
and you know things happen in tournaments weird things happen like i would say i would be significantly less surprised if they win than when they won the match in australia i was shocked like, okay I, yeah I agree that, on was, that. that was yeah, shocking. Okay, yeah yeah and things like and i would actually say it's like orders of magnitude more likely they win the world cup than that match um yeah that that just came out of nowhere i don't know what happened um no i agree but, with, i agree with you on that i think yeah actually i think that's a really good way of putting it so actually, on the scale of do they have a chance or not, Australia winning the Gabba was here, winning the World Cup is up here. It's, yeah, that's, <laughs> it, it that's does, no, I get, the I agree main reason that, I'm yeah. here. It's like, I look at this team and say, they won a match at the Gabba. <laughs> a yeah. test match with a week inside, no less. Yeah. I, it's, like I, it's like I don't want to be saying anything about their chances. <laughs> and you know what? That's a good, good retort fundamentally what you're saying is anything is possible so yeah. as much as i can say they're not they i don't think they are the the gabba victory showed that in sport in sport you put together the right set of circumstances at the right time and actually anything anything is possible listen jacob um i've gone way over what i said i was going to do um it's 10 past midnight here <laughs> um yeah so but listen, don't be a stranger. Obviously, every Monday um, we're back live. Now you've come. I always say to people, for when people come on the first time on uh, CCP, I always say, listen, once you've got over the first time nerves, just ring in whenever you want, man. And um, right. and whether, whatever you've got to say, whatever you want to say, just ring in and, and let's chop it up, you know? Let's chop it up. No Good worries, time. man. Good listen, time. take care. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Um I'm going to wrap this. And uh, are you in the Discord? I'm in the Discord, but I'm very shy, so I don't talk that much. Nah, man. Now, now you've done this. This, this, now I've done this, 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 this is more of a thing. This is more of a thing than the Discord. So That's now you've broken. Is. Now you've broken the live call in, duck. You can jump in the Discord and just cuss everybody, and you're and you're, <laughs> and, you're, and, you're, and, you're and you're good to go. Uh, so listen. Um, thank you for coming on the show, man. Thank you, and, ha and good luck with the job. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, man. Thank you very much. Cheers. Yeah. Right, people, that's the end of the live call-in show, the Caribbean Cricket Podcast on Monday night. We'll be back next Monday. I'm going to regret this, you know. Um, I'm going to regret saying that I would, um, I would commit to every Monday, but so far, so good. We're three shows in. Having a podcast on Monday nights. Before you go, people, like the video, share the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, let people know about CCP, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, TikTok. I'm probably missing something else. Website, Uh Santoki and I will be back with a show later this week looking at something to do with the England tour. I can't remember what we agreed to do. You'll probably see some shorts um, coming out uh, very soon on the YouTube, we haven't put, uh, TikTok and all of that. We haven't done some in a while, Reels or whatever it is. Um, yeah, and uh, if you want to be in the Discord group, the link somewhere in this chat, join it. I'm probably going to go to my bed in the next 10 minutes, so you, I might not say anything, but Fireball, Tabo, um, anybody else who's still in this live, they'll, they'll greet you um, and then cuss you. Uh, so I'll see you. So see you in the Discord group if you want to join us there. Um, I've been Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, one half of the Caribbean Cricket Podcast. Thank you as ever, everyone, and good night. We rule the cricket world. Now the rules. Welcome to the Caribbean Cricket Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things West Indies cricket. By the fans, for the fans. 